We're going to talk about chapter 12, which is our basics of chemistry. So most cosmetology services depend on the use of chemicals. Studying the basics of chemistry means that you will have the knowledge you need to understand the products that you are using in the salon to give your clients their professional services that they deserve. So we need to recognize how the science of chemistry influences cosmetology. So chemistry is the science that deals with the composition, structures, properties of matter and how matter changes under different conditions. Organic chemistry, the study of substances that contain carbon. All living or formerly living things contain carbon. All hair color products, chemical texturizers, shampoos, conditioners, styling aids, nail enhancements, and skincare products are organic chemicals. In organic chemistry, the study of substances that do not contain the element carbon, but may contain the element hydrogen. Metals, minerals, glass, water, air, pure water, oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxide hair relaxers, titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, and sun protection creams are inorganic substances. So how do we define matter? Matter is anything that occupies space. It has, femo, uh, has physical chemical properties and it exists in the form of a solid, liquid, or gas. Elements, these are the simplest forms of matter. They cannot be reduced without loss of identity. At least 98 naturally occurring and they are identified by a letter symbol. So for example, O is for oxygen, C for carbon, H for hydrogen, N for nitrogen, and S for sulfur. So these cannot be reduced to a simpler substance with, again, without the loss of the identity. An atom, this is the basic unit of matter. Molecules, the chemical combination of two or more. So we have elemental molecules and we have compound molecules. Um, the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons, and the number of protons determines the element. Atoms cannot be divided into simpler substances by ordinary chemical means. A molecule is a combination of two or more atoms in a definite or fixed proportion. For example, water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Elemental molecule, this is a chemical combination of atoms of the same element in fixed proportions. The air we breathe is an elemental molecule. We've got um, H2O, or excuse me, O2, and the ozone in the atmosphere is an elemental molecule of O3. So compound molecules, these are chemical compounds of two or more atoms of different elements in fixed proportions. Sodium chloride is also known as common table salt and is a compound molecule that contains one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. So states of matter, we have solid. These have a definite volume, shape, and weight. For example, ice. Liquids have a definite volume and weight, but not a definite shape because any liquid will take the shape of uh, its container. Gases, these do not have a definite volume or shape. Neon and argon are two different gases. A vapor, this is a liquid that has evaporated into a gas-like state. Vapors can be returned to a liquid when they cool at room temperature, unlike a gas. Steam is an example of a vapor. Vapors are not a unique state of matter. They are liquids that have only undergone a physical change. Physical properties, these are determined without a chemical reaction, whether it's the color, odor, weight, or density. Um, chemical pro properties, these are determined with a chemical reaction. An example would be iron that's rusted, wood that burns. 
And in order for hair to change color through the use of hair color and hydrogen peroxide, this would be an example of a chemical change. A temporary hair color that just goes on the surface and shampoos out the next time you shampoo your hair, that would be a physical change. So physical changes, the form is changed without becoming a new substance. Um, so there are physical things we can do to the hair and there are chemical things that we can do to the hair. Um, for example, solid ice melts and it becomes water. So that's just a physical change from going from a frozen state to a liquid state. A chemical change uh, is a change in the chemical composition or makeup of a substance. An example would be burning wood into ashes or iron to rust and the oxidation of hair color or the polymerization of artificial nail enhancements such as acrylics. So oxidation, this is a chemical reaction that combines a substance with oxygen to produce an oxide. For example, wood turns into charcoal after it has been burned. And in hair coloring, um, oxidation happens to our melanin pigments that give us our natural color in the hair by hydrogen peroxide in the lightening process. So oxidation reduction is also known as redox. This is a chemical reaction in which an oxidizing agent is reduced by losing oxygen and the reducing agent is oxidized because it gains oxygen. So if, you're ox if you have oxidation, it's losing oxygen. Um, and with reduction, it's gaining oxygen. Or excuse me, I apologize, I said that backwards. Again, a chemical reaction in which the oxidizing agent is reduced by losing oxygen and the reducing agent is oxidized because it gains oxygen. I apologize for that mix up. So oxidizing agents is a substance that releases oxygen. So hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizing agent um, and can be thought of as, as water with an extra atom of oxygen. So those of you that have played with hair color at home, when you mix developer into your tube of color, that is your oxidizing agent. So a reducing agent, this is a substance that adds hydrogen to a chemical compound or it subtracts, subtracts oxygen from the compound. So then we have exothermic reaction and combustion. So exothermic is when uh, a chemical reaction is when heat is released. Think of the heat's exiting. Um, combustion is rapid oxidation of a substance that's accompanied by the production of heat and light. So pure substances and physical mixtures. A pure substance has distinct properties. Um, it's a chemical combination of matter in definite or fixed proportions. Um, aluminum foil is an example of a pure substance. It only has atoms of the element aluminum. Physical mixtures are a combination of matter in any proportion. The properties of a physical mixture are combined with properties of the substances in the mixture. Salt water is a physical mixture of salt and water in any proportion. Solutions, this is a blend of two or more liquids or a solid dissolved in a liquid. A solute, that is the dissolved substance in a solution. And the solvent, that's a substance that dissolves another substance to form a solution with no change in chemical composition. So for an example, when sugar is dissolved in hot water, the sugar, the solid, is the solute and the water, which is a liquid, is a solvent. Water is a universal solvent. Miscible liquids are mutually soluble, so meaning that they can be mixed together to form clear solutions. Water and alcohol are examples of a miscible liquid, as in nail polish remover. And when these substances are mixed together, they will stay mixed, forming a solution. Immiscible liquids are not capable of being mixed. For example, oil and water. And a suspension or unstable um, physical mixtures of undissolved particles in a liquid. 
Emulsions, these are mixtures of two or more immiscible substances plus a special ingredient called an emulsifier. And then the emulsifier is an ingredient that normally brings two compatible materials together and binds them into a uniform and fairly stable blend. Uh, emulsions are considered to be a special type of suspension because over time they can separate, but the separation usually happens very slowly. An emulsifier would be an example of the egg and mayo um, would be an emulsifier because it helps to bind the other ingredients to make the mayo and it is fairly stable for a long period of time. So surfactants, um, surfactants are substances that allow oil and water to mix. They're, they are one type of emulsifier and the term surfactant is a contraction for surface active agents. And these substances allow oil and water to mix or emulsify. So the head of the surfactant, we have a hydrophilic or water loving and this dissolves in the water. So think hydro, water, the tail of the surfactant is lipophilic or it's oil loving and it dissolves in oil. So think lipo, lipo when, you know, we, some women get the fat sucked out. So oil and water emulsions, these are oil droplets that are emulsified in water and the droplets of oil are surrounded by surfactant molecules and they have their lipophilic tails pointing in and their hydrophilic heads pointing out. Tiny oil droplets from the internal portion of the oil water emulsion because the oil is completely surrounded by the water. Water in oil, water droplets are emulsified in oil and the droplets of the water are surrounded by surfactants with their hydrophilic heads pointing in and their lipophilic tails pointing out. So tiny droplets of water from the internal portion of a water oil emulsion because the water is completely surrounded by oil. So the differences among solution suspensions and emulsions. So miscible um, with a solution, it's miscible, it has no surfactant, small particles, it's stable, usually clear. Um, solution of a nail primer. A nail primer would be something you use with your acrylic nail formation. Suspensions are slightly miscible. There's no surfactant. They have large particles, unstable, temporary mixture usually cloudy, so an example of this would be like glitter suspended in nail polish. Emulsions, these are immiscible surfactant, largest particles, limited stability through an emulsifier. It's usually a solid color, so shampoos, conditioners, and hand lotions would be examples of emulsions. So other physical mixtures, we have ointments. These are semi-solids made with any combination of petroleum, oil, and wax. And then we also have powders, which are physical mixtures of two solids. Let me back up just a minute here. So um, with powders, again, physical mixture of one or more solids and off the scalp powdered hair lightener are physical mixtures. These mixtures may separate during shipping and storage and should be thoroughly mixed um, by shaking the container before each use. So uh, you may refer to it as bleach powder or decolorizer um, and then Ointments, paste, pomades, styling waxes are semi-solid and they have any combination of petroleum jelly, oil, and wax. So common chemical product ingredients, we have volatile alcohols, acolamines, ammonia, glycerin, silicones, and then volatile organic compounds. So volatile alcohols, these evaporate easily. An example would be isopropanol alcohol or rubbing alcohol and ethyl alcohol, which you would find in hairsprays and alcoholic beverages. Alkalamines are alkaline substances used to neutralize acids or raise the pH of many hair products, often used in the place of ammonia. Uh, one place you can find ammonia is in permanent hair coloring. So there are some ammonia free that would use a alkalamine as a substitute. So ammonia is colorless and has a pungent odor. It's combined are composed of nitrogen and hydrogen in a water solution. It's called ammonia water. Used to raise the pH, potential hydrogen is what pH stands for, and this is used in permanent waving, hair coloring, and lightening substances. Raising the pH soften and swells the cuticle, allowing the solution to penetrate the hair shaft. 
So glycerin, this is a sweet, colorless, oily substance, and it can be used as a solvent and a moisturizer. Silicone is a special type of oil used in conditioners, water-resistant lubricants for the skin, and nail polish dryers. They are less greasy than many other oils and can impart a smoky, smoky, <laughs> silky, smooth feel to skin and give shine to hair. So a lot of shine serums, you know, could have silicones or sometimes it's dimethicone. And then volatile organic compounds contain carbon. These can evaporate very easily. And the most common VOC is used in hairspray is ethyl alcohol. So understanding potential hydrogens or the pH and how it affects hair, skin, and nails. So the P, the small p represents a quantity and the capital H represents the hydrogen ion. So an ion is an atom or molecule that carries an electrical charge. Ionization is temporary separation of a substance into ions. And an anion is an ion with a negative electrical charge and a cation is an ion with a positive electrical charge or anion. So water and pH. In pure water, some of the water molecules naturally ionize into hydrogen ions and some into hydroxide ions and the pH scale measures these ions. So a hydro hydrogen ion is acidic and a hydroxide ion is alkaline. And we're going to be dealing a lot with um, acidity and alkalinity in hair products. Um, so the hydrogen ion is alkaline. It only aqueous solution have only aqueous solutions have a pH. Non aqueous solutions like oil and alcohol do not have a pH. Without water or water, there is no pH. Pure water contains the same number of hydrogen ions as hydroxide ions. It is neutral being 50% acidic and 50% alkaline. So the pH scale, we're concerned with this, you know, in hair products and hair chemicals. Um, again, it stands for potential hydrogen. It's a scale of zero to 14 with seven being neutral and the Scale measures in multiples of 10. So going up another level is 10 times the strength of an alkalinity or acidity. So acids and alkalis, all acids owe their chemical reactivity to a hydrogen Ion and acids have a pH below 7. So alpha hydroxy acids, AHAs, these are used in skin care um, to exfoliate the skin and they can be mild um, to a higher strength that would be used in a professional setting. Um, thioglycolic acid um, is a colorless liquid or white crystals with a strong unpleasant odor that's used in permanent waving to contract and close the hair cuticle. Um, Back to the alpha hydroxies, these can be de uh, derived from plants, mostly fruits. Um, glycolic is made from sugarcane. Lactic acids made from milk protein. Um, there's some other acids. Malic, I believe, comes from a mushroom um, that you may become familiar with or you may already be familiar with if you're um, a skincare guru and like to research. And glycolic acid. Um, is used in exfoliation and it can be used to lower the pH of other products. So alkalis, the base, owes their chemical reactivity to a hydroxide ion and these have a pH above 7 so they can feel slippery and soapy on the skin. Sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, is used in chemical hair relaxers, callus softeners, and drain cleaners. Um, so the same ingredient in a drain cleaner is also used in a lye-based hair relaxer. So acid alkali neutralization reactions, reactions, ionized water um, and neutralizing shampoos and normalizing lotions. You will see these 
And we want to talk about these when we're dealing with permanent waving and hair relaxing. So the same reaction that naturally ionizes water into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions also runs in reverse. When acids and alkalis are mixed together in equal proportions, they neutralize each other to form water. Neutralizing shampoos and normalizing lotions used to neutralize hair relaxers work by creating an acidic alkali neutralization reaction. Liquid soaps are usually slightly acidic and can neutralize alkaline callus softeners uh, residue left on the skin after rinsing. This is something you would use during a pedicure um, and you would just leave it on for the time specified by the manufacturer and then remove because chemicals left on too long can result in injuries. Um, relaxer left on too long can definitely result in hair loss. So whether you are studying the pH of products, the redox reactions, suspensions, solutions, or emulsions, there's a lot to learn about how chemistry affects the products you use in the salon. So we need to have an understanding of basic chemistry to help us be um, educated and effective professionals in our use and safety of products in the salon. So in review, the science that deals with the composition, structure, and properties of matter and how matter changes under difficult, difficult, different chemical conditions is called chemistry. And then organic chemistry deals with all the substances in which carbon is present, while inorganic chemistry deals with substances that do not contain carbon.